Hello and welcome to more Banjo Tui. Let's finally find out what's inside the hatch right here. And also, I actually split up. I'm actually just Banjo right now because we need that for a jam jars. And he's going to give us one of the best abilities probably in the entire game, the snooze pack. When you're feeling rather low, I know a place that you can go. Left trigger or right trigger followed by right stick right removes your pack. Have a nap to get energy back. Basically, we can heal anytime we like when we're Banjo solo now. Of course, Jam Jar has just healed us, so I can't really show that off right now, but let's go ahead and hit the switch while we're at it as well. So guys, today's episode is going to be pretty fast moving. There's a lot of stuff to do today. I would say just don't blink or you might miss like 20 steps because that's just how this episode's going to go. Hopefully I don't forget things as we go. I've tried my best to memorize things, but I do want to try to do this unedited because we're going to be going all over the place and I think edits will make it particularly hard to follow in this stage, so... I'll do my best not to have to edit. If I do have to edit just to look at some notes to refresh myself on what we're doing next, then I'll do that, but I've practiced this enough that I think we can do this. And just watch out for those gas guys. If those get onto your head, they will suffocate you very fast, so you gotta be careful about that. But that's all we can really do inside here. We got that cool new move, so let's go put it to use. We have back to floor one right here. We're actually gonna be... Oop, gosh dang it, I do that every time. If you just press up to go out. As soon as you get out, you'll fall back in. It's kind of annoying. But yeah, we're going to be Banjo by himself for a little while here, actually. This stage has a lot of Banjo solo and a lot of Kazooie solo. I mean, of course, you play it together <laughs> quite often as well as you'd expect, but I think this stage probably has the most splitting up out of anything we've done so far. So in here, we have the Trash Compactor, Intruder. Basically, well, let me let me heal up to full just to show you guys. But basically, this guy's kind of like the Stomponadon. What's going to happen is if we get crushed, it's going to drop us all the way down to 1 HP. So let's drop inside here, get healed all the way up to full. And as soon as we step on this metal, metal grate thing, BAM! We're smashed. We're going to be smashed into half, and our HP is down to 1. So what we do with the snooze pack, because there's going to be a second smasher, what we can do is get off in this little alcove and actually heal up to full. That way when we get smashed again, we'll just get dropped down to 1 health again instead of getting killed. So you can actually go across the Stomp Bonadon's field with Banjo Solo now that we have that. However, with this particular area, you can also just get across like that and completely avoid getting smashed. As long as you don't hit the metal grates, you'll be fine. So I prefer to do that just to save time. Oh, but it got me anyways. I messed up. All right. Well, that's okay. That's that's fine. I just wanted to save some time with having to heal, but looks like we're going to have to be cute little Banjo and go back inside our little pack. That's all right. Healing is pretty fast, as you can see. So we got it. Let's move on. Let's see if we can avoid getting hit for this one at least. And here we go! Made it! All right. So we are still actually not done with Banjo Solo. Actually, you know what? We are. Let's just let's just go back to Kazooie. We've got more Banjo Solo coming up in this stage, but for now, I think we're actually going to pick Kazooie up and uh, move on. So let's go grab her. Come on, Kazooie. It's time to go. So we're actually going to go right down here, break this box. And we can get those plunger shoes! Heck yeah, the claw clamber boots. And there's a wall we can climb over on this side, so let's go do that. Just gotta jump all the way up here. Now these actually are pretty strict on the timing, so you gotta be kinda fast. You can hear they're already running out, so we gotta get to the top quickly. And we made it just in the nick of time, alright. Yeah, you gotta be pretty fast with those in general. Almost everywhere in this entire stage that has those. You just gotta be fast, like Sanic. Let's use this uh, little spring pad here. This will take us up to floor two. Or the second floor. There's gonna be like five floors in this place. It's gonna be crazy. Lots of going back between different floors and all kinds of stuff. Let's go ahead and grab this warp pad. We have Humble Wumble's place, which is kind of made out of metal in here. But we're not ready to go inside there yet, even though we do have that globo. Now over here, this is kind of funny. There's a little crate that says, Deliver to Twycross, England. I think that's how you pronounce that. Excuse me if I'm wrong. But, uh, Twycross or how... <laughs> However you say it, that is where the company Rare that made this game is located, so I thought that was kind of a funny little thing there. Let's go climb this pipe in the middle and try not to get shocked. We did it! Hooray! We can climb fast. So we're going to drop off Kazooie once again, back to Banjo Solo. That's why I got confused and said we're not done with Banjo Solo yet. We were, we were done for that particular portion, but we're back to Banjo Solo once again. Because we got to go grab this battery using the taxi pack. It's got to get Kazooie out of that backpack sometimes. Oh, get it. There you go, Banjo. The funny thing is you can actually still do your snooze pack even when you have something in there. I'm not sure how Banjo and the battery can fit in, but Kazooie and the battery can't. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but 
I guess this is a banjo game. It doesn't doesn't have to make sense. So with the power of double jumps, we can climb up real fast. And this is the spot where I want to go drop the battery off, so let's go do that. Oop. Could you not grab onto the top? Thank you. Well, I'm kind of surprised I actually managed to drop the battery in. Normally, I press the wrong button and end up going sleeping inside the little charger thing there. But we are still not done with Banjo Solo. We'll come back for Kazooie a bit later. But for now, we're just going to move on. Do you want to go right down this way? Back into the uh, this room. These enemies are called Tin Tops, and you're going to be seeing a lot of them. We can't destroy the camera very easily. I don't even know if we can do it at all with Banjo Solo, because we can't use those eggs. And I don't think we can jump high enough to swing at it, so... It's fine, though. Even if the enemies hit us, we can just snooze back back to full health, so it's really just nothing to worry about. And they're pretty slow-moving in general, so just staying away from them's a fine tactic as well. So we'll be just fine. So all I want to do is actually go over down to this button, hit this, and we'll probably swap over to Kazooie right after this cutscene, because we're going to open up all the way at the top of this wall, a door, and inside is a Jinjo! So now we're going to swap to Kazooie, bring her over here as well. So that way we can climb up and get that. And like I said, I'm not going to edit too much in this episode. I know sometimes the edits are nice just to save time, but... It's just, it's going to get real confusing because there's just so many different places to go. So just in case anyone's following along... Heck, even, even if you're just a viewer, it'd probably get confusing uh, if I edited around too much. So I'm just going to try to be fast and efficient, but very minimal edits. So there we go, we got some Claw Clamber boots. Let's grab those and go all the way up top here. There's not going to be a lot of crazy long backtracking, though. Let's get all the backtracking segments are pretty short in this one. It's not like Terry Dactyland where you're backtracking across the entire stage over and over. And right here, guys, we're actually going to kill ourselves. And that is an entirely valid tactic, and I'll show you exactly why. For doing that, it brings us right back into the Toxic Room here with Banjo and Kazooie, so it's actually pretty gosh dang convenient. So we're still not done with Kazooie. We're going to go back into this room here, and we can grab some Plunger Boots. So we'll use those to climb up the wall in this room. As you guys might have saw Jinjo, but there's more than just that up here, because if it was just the Jinjo, well, if we could just grab that Jinjo now, we would, but we can't. We actually need to go over here as Kazooie Solo, talk to Jam Jars, and he'll give us a new move. So this is already our third new move here. Leg Spring, want this one I think you might. It greatly increases your jumping height. Hold down left trigger or right trigger and then press A behind, uh, bend your legs and be on your way. Wait, is this my third? Yeah, we got the Claw Clamber boots last time and today we got the Snooze Pack and the uh, Leg Spring here. So we've got a gosh dang lot of new moves, but this is what we can do. We can flip really dang high now, which is pretty cool, but we don't really need to do that here. Let's just jump across, grab those notes and go up and flip up to that Jinjo. So we can go really, really high with Kazooie now, which is pretty awesome. But let's go ahead and finally regain Banjo. We're finally back to fighting as a team. Banjo and Kazooie, not just one or the other. So inside the electromagnetic uh, magnet chamber right here, not much to do as Banjo and Kazooie, but I just want to go hit one button. So in this stage, there's actually an elevator shaft, which is right over here. And if you use that shaft, you can actually go up to different areas. So let me just go ahead and show you guys inside real quick. So we can use this shaft to travel up to different floors by climbing up that centerpiece. Although the only floors we have open right now, I believe, are the first and the second. If you climb all the way to the top, there are some signs that give you some good tips, but I don't really, I don't really need the tips. We'll be fine. So I'm just going to move on here. I honestly won't use that elevator chamber too much. It is just an option if you want to change floors like that, but I'll, I'll mostly be using the... Oops, actually didn't want to go that way. One second. Okay, we're back up by the door. I, may, I actually meant to go over this way. But yeah, if you use the elevator shaft, you could, but I'm going to be mostly, mostly be using the warp pads instead. Let's just go ahead and blast that open. So this little shortcut will take us right back to Humble Wumba's right here. And we're actually going to go over into this room. This room does connect to where we would have gone anyways by jumping down, but I wanted to break up, open that shortcut for a bit later. It'll be good to have. Anyways, let's go down to here, kill this guy off. And I think we're actually going to grab the more plunger boots inside here. Yes, we're going to be using these a lot. They're a pretty big part of the stage. But that's all we need them for, just to get up that wall there. Why they have us do that instead of use a pipe, I don't know. But let's go ahead and open up another shortcut down this metal uh, hallway right here. We're opening up some shortcuts for later on, because characters like Mumbo, not so mobile. So once we control some of them, uh, we'll definitely want to be able to get around without going through all these crazy things and climbing and all that. Well, let's go up here. Now, right over here is a Globo. You could actually climb up those boxes to get it, but I just find it 
much more convenient to just uh, use a clockwork kazooie egg just like that. So now we have two Globos, which we will need both of for sure. And we're gonna go back to Banjo Solo once again. Here we go. You know what? I might as well snooze back just to get to full health real quick. There we go. So we're going back in another room right here, which does have some tin tops. I think as long as we hold to the left, they shouldn't spot us right away, so we'll be fine. We can go over and grab this battery right here. Scoop them up. There we are. So they're probably going to spot us on the way over here, but at this point, it really doesn't matter. They're not going to be able to catch up to us in time, so it's just fine. Let's go grab this warp pad and hit up the pipe right here. So long, tin tops. Yep, they didn't even get a chance to hit me, really. So we're just going to go down this tunnel. And by going through here, we can go across this pipe over here. Uh, let's see, where is it? There you are! So the shocky bit's on the middle right there. We can just jump right over the shocky bit and be just fine. Can I make the jump? Oh, we made it! Sick! You don't have to do crazy jumps like that because the double jump thing is never required in the game. But I like doing crazy jumps when they let us. Well, I meant to grip grab onto this! Dang it! Oh, wait, we're fine. We're fine. I was just trying to grab on, so... Come on, grab on there! Grab! Oh, grab onto that crud. Thank you, Banjo. Gosh dang, man. I was trying to just do that. I wasn't trying to be fancy and run across the top because it's actually pretty difficult, especially with the camera how it is sometimes. But we made it across. Let's go into the boiler plant. Is anyone keeping track of how many times we change areas? Because it's going to be quite a high number. We got a couple enemies right here. We're just going to not really deal with them right now. Let's just go drop this battery off, then we'll use that swap pad to go back to Kazooie. Would you... He does that every time. He's always just got to grab onto the top. All right, so that will open up the packing room. And I don't want to go in there as Banjo. You Actually, you could, I guess. And you could even go in as Banjo and Kazooie, but I want to go in as Kazooie solo. I think it's the best way to go here. Let's see if I can find an easy way across. I think I just want to go down this way, right? Uh, yep, right across here. And we can flip-flap up to the top here, or leg spring, whatever it's called when you're Kazooie solo. If we break open this, we got a shock spring, so we'll use that to get up here. Break open this box and get a empty honeycomb piece. And I'm also going to use this to just go across and get some notes right over here. There's also, over this way, uh, there, you can see in the left right there, that was actually just a Minjo, not a Jinjo, so I'm not worried about that. Did not mean to fall and take that damage right there, but we'll be okay. It was worth it, I got to show off the Minjo. Oop, let's actually shock spring up to the top here. And we can jump across, go over to where Banjo is. Hooray! The big old pants, they got boxes of underwear everywhere. I'm assuming that those underwear are for Gruntilda, but who knows. Okay, so we're gonna go inside the packing room as Kazooie Solo, as I mentioned. And that is because this is going to be yet another minigame! And this one is basically based around movement speed. And Kazooie by herself is way faster than Banjo and Kazooie together. We don't need the rules, you guys know at this point. Blue is three, green is two, red is one. But I would say, well, first off, go grab these turbo trainers, but I would say this is probably the most difficult minigame that we've done so far. This one is actually a pretty high chance of failing. You just want to do your best to look out for the blue ones. You can see the light pretty well, and you can also see, like, purple. If, if you see purple, that means there's a blue nearby. Now, the more lights we pick up, the slower it's going to make us. So you want to go over to these pads to drop off all your lights. Otherwise, you're just going to be too slow to keep up with everything. So we're looking to get 40 points right here. And sometimes you just get bad luck and you do not get a lot of blues, which is happening right now. So I might not have a good a good score at the end of this, but as long as I get that 40, we'll be fine. Let's just try my best. The first time I did this, I think I had like two seconds left on the clock when I finished. So it, it really can be quite difficult. Okay, there's three more points. Grab that blue and we got it. Alright, guys. So yeah, you can see we cut it not super close. We have 10 seconds left, but... Most of the time when I do these mini games, I have like 30 seconds left by the time we're done. So not even anywhere near that for this one. But there we go! For completing that, we of course will get a Jiggy. Packing requirements have been met. A bonus will now be awarded! Hooray! So let's go ahead and grab that. And I thought about ending the episode right here. But this stage is so long and so complicated that all of the progress we've made, we've got a lot done today. I don't think it's enough for one episode of Grunty Industries. So let's keep going! Let's go ahead and grab Banjo here, and we're going to go over to this little uh, plate we'll see in just a moment. Now, if you did climb to the top of the elevator, they would basically, th one of the signs would tell you that using the build drill will take out bolts, and, oop, if I could actually hit it, and basically it's giving you a tip on how to take this thing off. So if we take off that bolt, it'll slowly drop down, or it'll start to loosen up the uh, thing right there, which had a mumbo pad on it. So we want to just loosen this crud up, 
get all four bolts out. And we got it! So that right there, for some reason, taking the bolts out will completely shatter the chain into pieces and drop down that mumbo pad. So now that that's down, what do you say we go and actually activate that with mumbo? And prepare yourselves for a very, very crazy sequence. First thing we want to do is just uh, drop down and go right over to mumbo. But yeah, this is going to be a very long, or not very long, but a pretty complicated timed sequence. And I kind of like it. They make use of a lot of different things all working together in a short time span. It's, it's pretty fun. So first things we got to do is go up inside and talk to Mumbo. And unfortunately, they don't give us any health in this one. I mean, usually they have feathers or health or eggs or something, but... No, not this one. This one doesn't have crud. Let's just go talk to Mumbo. Welcome again, Baron Bird. Yes, indeed. Take the Globo from me. Must give magic creature. Yes, I, I just told you I have a Globo. Watch, guys. He's going to totally throw... It's going to go right through the bag. Just watch. It'll go through the bag and then disappear. And there it goes. I don't know why that happens. I guess they just forget to make the model disappear uh, early enough. So, okay. Let's start the sequence. First thing we got to do is go to Mumbo. And we got to go back to that area that had the uh, Mumbo switch. So to get there, we're going to go over to Humble Wumbas. And we're actually going to take that shortcut we opened up. And just use that to walk across. Because if you go down, you have to climb the pipe. Can't really do that as Mumbo. So we have to use the shortcut here. Let's go right inside. Now the button right there, completely ignore that. If you step on it, it'll just say that you're not heavy enough. And uh, Banjo and Kazooie were not heavy enough. Mumbo's not heavy enough either. However, we can go ahead and hit this crud. Hope this works. EMP Electromagnet. And there goes the Globo. It's dead. Danger, high voltage. Whoa, the magnet. Magnet malfunction. Auto fixing program initiated. So yes, we have to do all of this before the uh, before the timer is up. So first thing we want to do, go all the way back and gain control of Banjo and Kazooie again. All of this is on a timer, but with that said, uh, the timer just pauses when we're transitioning screens, and it also pauses when we're uh, looking at the warp pad. So. That's pretty handy. If you need some time to just chill and think, just open up the warp pad, you can you can do that. But we're just going to go back to Mumbo's house here. He's also got a metal skull. I, somehow I did not realize that, even though it's really obvious. I don't think it's as cool as the Witchy World one where you had, like, the Inferno skull. That was pretty sick. But we'll jump back in the chair, go back to Banjo and Kazooie. Let's go back. Now we have to go back to Wumba's once again, because it's time to transform to a Wumba transformation. And the transformation in this stage is either the best or the worst, depending on your perspective on things. So let's go talk to her, let's go give her the Globo. Once again, the timer is not going to tick away while we're talking to her, so... You don't have to worry about that. So we'll just throw in that Globo, since we had two of them. Magic ready! Jump in Wumba Pool! I guess I can do that. Hooray! And we transform into a washing machine! Heck yeah! There was actually a cheat code in the original Banjo-Kazooie that would allow you to turn into a washing machine, kind of. It was more of just a model swap, but this one is a full-fledged washing machine. We can roll around, we can jump, we can shoot pairs of underwear, all kinds of stuff. And yes, our, our attack is shooting air underwear, it's ridiculous. But with this, we have to go inside here. I've been pretty fast, so the uh, timer is pretty high up, but that's pretty much all we have to do is bring the washer inside here and hit that button. And that'll actually open up a door on the other side of the building. And we'll we'll go to that at some point. It's inside the repair depot. We're not going to make it to that one today. Probably sometime next episode we'll get that. But with that, we're done. Don't worry about the timer at this point. Uh, we've done all we need to do, so we'll just get out of here. But while we're a washing machine, we might as well go wash some things. You guys have seen those rabbits around the stage? Their clothes are dirty, so we got to wash them. So let's do it. And this is actually... Oh, well, here's the shortcut we opened up. We had to open up that so we could get across with the washer. But this is one thing I really, really like about this stage. One, we have Banjo and Kazooie all kind of separating and working, you know, doing their own stuff, which is really awesome. We have Mumbo and Wumba coming together to actually make some stuff happen here. And we have a transformation that is actually very, very integrated into the stage itself, which is really cool. The problem I had back with... Uh, some of the other transformations, like the giant dino. It's like you swap to them, you do like one thing, and that's it, you're done with them. But the washer, we actually take it all over the stage, do all kinds of stuff, and it's just, it's worked into the actual stage really well, and I, I like it a lot. Like I said, there's just so much they could have done differently with the transformations. Like, if they had a, a giant dino versus conga battle, that would have been so awesome, you know? 
Okay. I even I even know what Jiggy they could have got rid of. If they made the Conga Dino Battle a Jiggy, um, they could have got rid of the Pterodactyl, uh, the nest, you know? You fight Terry, you get a Jiggy. You go inside the nest, you get a second Jiggy. If they just got rid of that Jiggy from inside the nest, boom! There's a Jiggy slot freed up, and they could have had a cool battle with that. I mean, maybe, maybe they intended to do that originally, and they just couldn't make it work, or they had uh, time constraints. So I'm not going to try and say that they didn't do it because they were lazy. You know, there's, there's much more to game development than just, you know, that. There's money, there's time, all kinds of stuff. So it could have been a whole host of factors that led to the transformation being kind of lackluster in there. But in this stage, definitely not. This, sta this stage, we go all over the place. We even have these service elevators, which are only for the washer. You can't use the warp pads as the washer, so they have these uh, service elevators kind of integrated into the stage, which is really cool. So we can go to different floors using that. And we also have some service doors that you can only open as the washer. Ow! Gosh dang it, I'm gonna get killed by nuts and bolts, is that what's gonna happen? Oh, more, I guess it's nuts and washers, never mind. But yeah, there's a door right back here, let's shoot some underwear at it. And inside here, we could not go in here with uh, Banjo and Kazooie, but as the washer we can. So let's go wash some more bunny rabbits, hooray! The funny thing, watch this dude, we're gonna wash his clothes, once we spin it back on, somehow it washes the bunny rabbit himself as well. I don't know how that happens, but it does, and it's kind of interesting. Alright, so we gotta keep washing some more. We can't wash all of the rabbits right now, there's one we can't do quite yet, but we can, we can do most of them at least, there's two more we can do I think. So let's just dodge the nuts and bolts. I'm sure you guys will love it if I dodge the nuts and bolts, but we're gonna play that someday. It's my favorite game, so we'll uh, we'll get to that. Okay, let's go up to floor five. We have another service door door to go inside. I hope you guys are able to follow this. I know I'm going pretty fast, going over a whole bunch of steps. That's kind of why I said I don't want to edit it because you guys could probably imagine how crazy and hard to follow this would be if I was editing all over the place. But there's just so much to do here. I'm gonna use this guy the damage boost to get up here and get that ow to get that Jinjo. There's also one more bunny we can get right up here. Hey, mister! Yep, another heavy soil wash, no problem. Now we are a very, very boxy washer right here. Those are some sharp edges. And I don't know why we still have a backpack and why our pants are stretched to fit, but... Yeah, well. So there's one more we can do. Ow! Would you stop zapping me, you little crot? Let's take this guy back to the service hell. Ow! Come on, man! It's a good thing I have plenty of health right now, because I am getting destroyed. But yes, let's go down to floor one now. And I'll show you guys the rabbit that we actually can't clean right now. Uh, he's right to our side here. And right up there. I've tried a thousand different times. We cannot make that jump as far as I know with the washer. So we'll have to come back for him. But for now, let's just go down into the workers' quarters. And this is a cool little area, because they have a Jet Force Gemini poster right there, which is awesome. Out. Well, this is a pretty good view of it, at least. Ow, we just stop! There's also a fridge which has some, like, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie. All kinds of little logos on there, which is cute. But let's just go inside here into this awkward mumbo room and watch the last rabbit we can do right now. And also, I'll try to show you guys on the wall. For some reason, inside the mumbo room, there's a Humble Wumbo picture on the wall. Maybe Mumbo has a crush on her? I don't know. But guys, that is all we can do with the washer for now. And that is going to be it for this episode. I know there was a lot to take in in this one. We just got a whole crud ton of stuff done. But there is still so much Grunty Industries to go. So I will see you guys next time. Take care.